Hi, my name's Megan and I work as a marine geophysicist at Wessex Archaeology. So we know that there's a huge amount of archaeology both on and below the seabed, but the issue for us is when it's hidden beneath the sea, how do you find it? And that's where marine geophysics comes in. So marine geophysics is a collective term for a number of different remote sensing techniques that allow us to investigate the physical properties of the seabed and what's below in a non-invasive way. So geophysical surveys are often undertaken ahead of any large offshore construction work. So this is things such as building an offshore wind farm. Through archaeologically assessing this data, we're able to identify if there are any features of archaeological interest on the seabed and ensure they're protected ahead of any construction. As marine geophysicists, there are four main sensors we use. These are multi-beam echo sounders, side scan sonars, marine magnetometers and sub-bottom profilers. Multi-beam echo sounders uh, are used to create a bathymetric map of the seafloor. Um, so this is done by uh, the echo sounders emitting an acoustic wave. From the time it takes that sound wave to travel to the seafloor and back, we can work out the depth to the seabed. This is really useful for identifying features that are standing tall from the seabed, such as shipwrecks. Next we have side scan sonars. So these again use sound, but this time they create a sort of image of the seafloor. These emit a sound wave into the water column and listen to the strength of the return signal. The strength of the return signal will vary depending on the material of the object on the seafloor. So a harder object, such as a steel shipwreck, will reflect more of that sound energy and appear darker in the image compared to softer materials such as waterlogged wood which will absorb some of that sound energy and appear lighter in the image. It can also give us information on the dimensions of the objects on the seafloor such as the length and how tall it is. All of this can help give us clues as to what the object on the seafloor is. Next we have marine magnetometers. So these are slightly different in that they are passive sensors. They don't emit anything. Instead, they detect changes in the Earth's magnetic field. So these changes will be caused by any ferrous material, which is material containing iron. Uh, so ferrous objects that are either on or buried beneath the seabed. The size of the magnetic anomaly will vary depending on how much ferrous content there is. So an object containing a lot of ferrous material, such as a steel shipwreck, will um, give a much larger magnetic anomaly compared to a wooden shipwreck. And finally we have sub-bottom profilers. So these again use sound, uh, but this time instead of looking at the seabed, they're looking at what's buried beneath it. So we know that many thousands of years ago, sea level was much lower than it is today. And during these periods, a lot of the coast around the UK would have actually been dry land. So this would have been home to a variety of different animals as well as potentially early humans. When sea level rose, uh, these past landscapes were buried beneath the sand and submerged by the sea. However, however we can still find evidence of them uh, using sub-bottom profilers and finding things such as channel features and gravel banks. So again, these work with sound. They uh, emit an acoustic wave which penetrates the seafloor. When that sound wave hits a horizon, which is either a change in sediment or uh, a change in angle, so the cut of, an old, uh, cut of an old river channel, it will reflect some of that sound energy back. This reflected sound can then be used to map these past landscapes that are buried beneath the seafloor. Uh, and from that we can work out areas that are more likely to contain archaeological material. So. We know from land-based investigations, as well as some offshore investigations, that areas such as channel margins can often contain relatively high amounts of archaeological material. So in identifying these features in the sub-bottom profiler data, we're able to find areas that are more likely to contain artefacts, as well as paleo-environmental material of interest, such as peats. Once we've identified these features, we're able to investigate them further. So this could be things uh, through things such as remotely operated vehicle investigations, uh, diver surveys, and also ge uh, geotechnical investigations where they will uh, sample the sediment below the sea floor. All of this can give us a huge amount of information about 
the exact age and origin of the features of interest. So ultimately what this means is that through planning for our future, by developing these large sustainable schemes such as offshore wind farms, we're able to find out a huge amount about our past, um, all the way from relatively recent events such as the World Wars to what the lives of our ancient ancestors might have been like during the Ice Ages.